that's what's more fun for me. I spent most of my life as Taking all the boxes on the leading man checklist, Clive Owen has been blessed with bucket loads of handsome bravado and a big brain to match. It's this combination that has enabled him to earn a solid reputation amongst a whole spectrum of moviegoers. Growing up in rural England, Clive spent the better part of his early career giving strong magnetic performances in low-budget British films that barely saw the light of day. It wasn't until the film Croupier that he finally broke through to international audiences. This film popped the cork for Clive's career and the offers from the US began to pour in. First up in 2001, he acquired a part in the ensemble cast for Gosford Park, which is the brilliant Cluedo-esque mystery film that created winners out of every actor who played. But how do you really know if you've won in Hollywood? Taking the lead in a Bruckheimer blockbuster must be a good sign. Clive starred in King Arthur and embellished the historical figure enjoying the powerful nature of the story. But the fundamental arc of the story of the movie is a really good one. They have to go into unknown territory. They have to fight all sorts of forces along the way, rescue a family and bring them back. Now that, as a movie arc, is a winning one. You know, that's, you know, we're straight into a very dynamic, sort of powerful action story. Great to be around, we have a great time together. But uh, he's a bit of a mystery, and that's what we wanted for Arthur as well. Uh, we didn't want to put a face on it that you knew, really, you know, like the big movie stars that you know. I wanted to get a leading man who had the presence and power and the grace and the acting ability to pull it off. And I saw Clive in the film uh, Coupier, Coupier, I think it's called. He was amazing. He's just amazing, you know? And I met him, and I just thought, couldn't get him out of my head, he was King Arthur. Let's see, with plenty of smooth British swagger, proven acting ability, and the right frame to fill out a suit, it would seem that Clive Owen would be the perfect choice as the next James Bond. But, as hindsight does tell us, that title went to fellow Englishman Daniel Craig. Now, you would think this would have been a disappointment for Clive, but as he said, Bond was the best thing that never happened to me. All the speculation surrounding him taking on the 007 character was exactly that, speculation. He was never offered the role, although the film world believed he was a front-runner, which garnered plenty of attention and, most importantly, an abundance of film offers. And one of those proposals was from the offbeat minds of directors Robert Rodriguez, Quentin Tarantino and Frank Miller in Sin City. Based on Miller's graphic novel, Clive didn't have to read between the lines to create his character. In terms of research, there isn't that much research required, really, because it's such a faithful adaptation of the graphic novel. Everybody's objective is very clear. There's something very satisfying about going to work every day, and there's none of that sort of interpretation. You don't come to work and say, I think my character would, I think I should wear, because it's very clear. It's there in front of you. You see the, you see the drawings, you see the pictures, the guy looks like that, he wears those clothes, and he says those lines. And there's something very satisfying about honing in and just trying to accomplish something that sort of pure, really. Comics and wielding a saw can only get you so far, but critical acclaim usually comes from emotive dramas. Previously starring in the romantic, brutal stage play Closer in the 90s, Clive had all the work experience required to be cast for the cinematic version. His familiarity of the ensemble piece empowered his hard-edged performance, which turned out to be the most heavily cited by the critics, earning him a Golden Globe and Oscar nomination. From strength to strength, Clive became something of a script whisperer, choosing films to complement his smart and strong vibe, such as Children of Men, the futuristic dystopian tale of a former political activist tasked with the mission of transporting a pregnant woman after the human race was thought to be infertile. It's a very strange thing. It's a very strange idea, just as a concept, that, you know, if no one's had a kid in 18 years, there's no sound of children. There's no, 
there's nobody, you know, investing in the future because there's no future. You know, the bleakest outlooks of where we're heading now is what people are most concerned about, environmental issues, you know, fertility issues, you know, all the things that people are worrying about the, the way the world's going, you know, is very appropriate to that as, a, as an idea. It's, you know, we worry about the environment, not for ourselves, but for our children. Continuing his skill for script picking, Clive chose the globe-trotting conspiracy thriller, The International. Amidst its high-octane pace, co-star Naomi Watts was impressed at his ability to never miss a beat. He's very, very dedicated to his work and uh, always incredibly well prepared. In fact, he would have, you know, endless paragraphs of quite difficult dialogue at times and just never, ever miss a moment. He's, he's just brilliant um, and probably you know, for a man as good looking as he is and who wears a suit as well as he does, and I, I mean, I've never seen less vanity in, in an actor, probably. Developing the enviable position of the leading lady's leading man of choice, Clive signed on for the surefire hit Duplicity opposite Julia Roberts. This film reunited the pair after sparring together in some of Close's more provocative scenes chemistry I mean it's that thing it's just it's there or it's not um, and Clive and I definitely have it because I think that our, the nature of our relationship is really um, excitable and charged we just enjoy being together just the way that our brains work is kind of similar in a funny way or it's we work on the same frequency you know so that is our chemistry. It's one of the huge attractions for me to do this film is to get the opportunity to do that kind of dialogue with Julia Roberts. I mean, you know, um, it's so well written that in some ways you don't have to make that many decisions as an actor. You have to sit in it like a very comfortable car and just drive it because the rhythms are all there. And to, to get too smart and try and mess with that rhythm would not be very smart because he's so on top of it. And it's a joy when you've got that kind of language to play and to play it with someone like Julia who I think is a master of ease, really. A regular down-to-earth family man off-screen, Clive was ready to tackle a domestic drama. Filmed against a South Australian backdrop, The Boys Are Back exhibits an original form of family dynamics and provided Clive with an insight into the challenges of fathering sons. I think just the fact that I'm a parent, I mean, um, I, I haven't experienced the huge loss that the young boy and the father experienced in this film, but all the ups and downs of parenting, I felt I felt like I related very strongly to. I'd, I'd sort of been in similar situations with my kids, and, and I was interested in doing a family film that wasn't the usual sort of coy, oversweet, sort of very lovely, everybody's very... I was interested in exploring that in a very real, honest way, really. Following along the same line, Clive's next project would again explore themes of parenting in the shocking drama Trust. Clive plays an understandably overprotective father, struggling to hold and keep his family together after his teenage daughter has fallen victim to an online sexual predator. And the thing that intrigued me most was the way it fractured the family, really, and the way that everybody reacts differently under those situations. And it's not the cliche perfect thing of the family all coming together and giving each other lots of love and struggling on through, that people react differently under that kind of stress. And there's anger and there's guilt and there's, you know, a terrible pain. And it was a very deftly, you know, exploration of that kind of thing. That's why I wanted to do the movie. All the stress of family dramas was taking a toll on Clive. Needing a break, he grew a mo, teamed up with his bros, Jason Statham and Robert De Niro, and launched into the action film Killer Elite. Although this project wouldn't be just a boy's night out, Clive's character was a member of the SAS, which meant taking notes from a real-life ex-agent. He was a great sort of uh, um, explainer of what it's like to be ex-SAS in a way, to be someone who... There's something that this film covers, I think, that's the most interesting aspect for me playing this part and why I wanted to explore it is when a guy's been that sort of highly trained and highly skilled and been in such extraordinary, intense situations and, you know, lots of situations where it's life or death, to suddenly then let that go and to try and live a normal life about what that is and how people are and how, what a lack of understanding there must be from anybody else who hasn't been through that about what they've been through. There is something about Clive that attracts directors and producers to cast him as an agent type character. 
The film Shadow Dancer is no different, with Clive acting as a member of the British intelligence agency MI5. So is it the fun of playing a secret agent, or is it something much more classified? I don't think it's related to actually pl playing um, agents. I think it's more to do, it's more character based. You know, I, I'm always attracted to parts that are in some kind of conflict, because to me, conflict is drama, and that's where you can actually do your best work because there's subtext, because everything isn't obvious. So I'm attracted to characters that are put in dilemmas, that are struggling with something, and, and that, you know, that's the case of this. I don't think it's less to do with actually playing an MI5 guy than it is the character in his predicament. After reaching the top, that's what it boils down to for Clive Owen. An original script, the right director, and a character that he's fascinated with and wants to explore. Clive Owen's career has been brilliant to watch so far, and the good news is, he's only just getting started. Stay tuned to Starfix for all the movies you know and the actors you love. Broadcast in high definition with 5.1 surround sound where available. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your movie network channels. Find or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube and mnc.tv.